So guys, welcome to how to play Command and Control. These short tutorial videos will take you through the game from start to finish and show you how your units will activate, move, fight uh, as part of the game system. So the first thing to be aware of is that Command and Control follows the Roll Under Combat System, uh, which is a system of our own design. Essentially, statistics in Command and Control typically range from one to six. And you're looking to roll equal to or under that number. So a higher number on your unit card, which we will discuss shortly, means that the unit is better um, in that aspect. And you're looking to roll equal to or under. So the concept of a unit, first of all, we have two units for you today on the table. First we have a unit of French line and then a unit of French Imperial Guard. And we're going to show you the differences between those units. Uh, and how that's represented on the unit card. So the first thing to be aware of is there's two statistics, two core statistics in Command and Control. The first one is experience, uh, which is really the experience, raw experience of the unit um, and it, how effective it is at fighting in close combat. Second statistic is training, which represents its formal discipline, military training, etc. and also determines how effective it is when it's shooting with its ranged weapons. By adding those two statistics together, we get a competency value. Essentially, we will go into that in more depth later, but you're looking to roll equal to or under your competency value on 2d6. And if you do, that order, that order will be successful and the unit will act. So Ian is going to run you through now the concept of the unit card and look at the differences between two units in CNC. Okay, so... Our French line guys have statistics that are obviously not going to be as good as our guardsmen. So for example, if you look at the card on the screen, their experience is 3 and their training is 3, meaning a competency of 6. Now you might think that that's going to be very difficult to roll under 2d6 to ever get them to do anything. But the game is called Command and Control, so you can't, you can't really send them off by themselves. They do need to... To stay within a command structure otherwise you're going to flip the turn to the opponent but when you look on the other side of a really really good unit what we have is our guard a French guardsman experience five training four. these guys will be a competency nine so they will go without they will go without the need for much command and control you can trust them to follow orders they are that good when we look through the card there, the points are still blank at the moment because we're working on that and that's where the community comes in. So unit size 12 for both, that's easy enough. Movement is 8. We just kind of figure that in a specific genre, not everybody is a Usain Bolt style. People generally are of the same kind of movement value. You know, they've got kit on them, etc, etc. They're moving around. So more often than not, units generally kind of move the same. Obviously, if you're going into back into medieval and stuff like that, knights carry more armor, their kind of things, their movement's impeded, so they'll be a bit slower than the likes of uh, just a little guy with a hunting bow. He's going to be faster, but we'll come into that with different unit types. But mostly, infantry will all move the same. Each model has one wound, and in Napoleonics, which is the genre there, the armor is two or less, which means you need to roll on one dice, under a two. Now it looks pretty brutal that and a lot of folk die, but hug and cover and stuff which we love is important for a unit survival. If you go just walking around into the open, you're gonna get smashed. Fair enough. That's up to the player here. Uh, muskets again, now we've got quite short ranges because we want to encourage folk to play on tighter boards and really get stuck in from the get-go. Forming up gun lines and blasting away each other, you can do that an all power to you, but you're not really going to get much of a game there. So we're really encouraging folk to come in tight. And um, we've got other weapons, obviously in the Napoleonic era, you've got other weapons that are going to increase range and stuff, and they will be hiding. Uh, one attack there, bayonet, one attack as well. No AP value on them at the moment, but that could change. If somebody wants to do that, they can do that. That's all, all easy stuff. And um, you'll see in the abilities and weapons, both the French line and the guard have close-ordered fighting and they have close-ordered shooting. That means when you rank up in a traditional kind of 
in more of a kind of Napoleonic way that people will be familiar with, you're obviously side by side with your colleagues. Now that's fine for French attack column, hence the close order of fighting. But also likewise, if you can form up into a, into a block and you're nice and ordered and organized, then you're going to get plus one to your shooting as well. We'll go on to that in a different one there, a different vid. So the key word for them is they have close formation. Both of them do. And they also have the option to take a colour party as well, and both of them have that. But the main important thing to remember here is that competency value. That's what you need to think about. So no matter what unit it is, in any genre, its competency value is really key for them to actually activate in. Because if you don't, you will flip the turn to your opponent, you'll bang down an ineffective token, and then it's his go. So that's basically a kind of quick run through the cards there. Perfect, yeah, so moving on to unit types, um, guys, as Ian has mentioned, each unit card will fit it, uh, feature its unit type. And what that dictates in the game is the starting strength, which is the number of models in the unit, and how many wounds each model within the unit has. Fairly basic for the French line and the Imperial Guard. They are both infantry units, which for the purposes of the core rules, is 12 models in the unit with one wound per model or base. The reason I say base is because this is not just a 28 millimeter game. It can also be used uh, with smaller scales or larger scales if you de desire. So for example, on the camera now, you will see a Greek phalanx and each one of these elements or bases essentially operate within the core rules exactly the same but this just represents one model effectively. So this would be identical to this guardsman in terms of all the all the rules for the core game. So you can play this with any scale, any models, they can be multi-based, etc. Really let your imagination run wild. So we have two line units here, as I've mentioned. Uh, another sample unit size that you'll see quite often in Napoleonics would be this skirmish unit of Voltigeurs. And as you can see from the core rules, they are starting strength of six models, again with one model per base. Some unit types of special rules or special orders that they can take, and that will appear in either the core rules or the genre supplement. Um, so Ian, would you like to take us through unit coherency? Yep, so we always thought that coherency, it comes, it comes really naturally to people that have played war games before. But what we definitely don't like is the conga line of stuff. Because uh, you know who you are, people. You know who you are. So in this game, you basically have to... You're kind of forced to keep everybody bunched up. So every, every model needs to be within half an inch of at least another two models. So you need to bunch up nice and tight. And that just keeps things tight. And it stops these weird shapes... Because we've got to remember as well in CNC, they have to shoot the closest unit, which is something we'll come on to. So if you're making all these wacky shapes and all that, you can skew the game. So we tend to, well, we don't tend to, it's in the rules that you need to keep nice and tight together. And that just means that you can move things around and it looks it looks right if you catch my drift. Um, and that's that for the coherency, I think. Yeah, thanks Ian. Uh, so yeah, the last thing that features on a unit card and is, is important for the purposes of the game and in particular genres is unit keywords, which you can see here at the bottom of the unit card on the screen. So those keywords basically interact with different um, parts of the game and a unit would have to possess that keyword um, to avail of that rule essentially. And we'll come on to more of those um, later on in the how to play videos. But with that, we are going to move on now and talk you through the game turn and how to actually order and activate your units in CNC.